Okay, so I'm gonna start with this uh, little critique series of Man, Economy, and State by Murray Rothbard. Again, I'm not a I'm not against the Austrian school of thought. I'm just exploring which school of thought fits me best. And I've started this five-step series on how to find that school of thought. First, you must investigate. Look for different popular modes of, and schools of thought. And then you find the book where you can find, get your best research of that school of thought. Then you articulate. You try and do your best to, I think, uh, understand it and not make straw mans, which is very easy to do. And if I ever make a straw man, you can point out that straw man. Now try to reform that argument, because I want to articulate what this piece is trying to say. Then you make an evaluation. Basically, you judge it as point out the good parts and the bad parts. And then you evacuate. You leave after that. Don't focus on anything else. And last but not least, because there will be trouble after you make a statement. Last but not least, you master. And I don't think I should have to bother and worry about teaching people how to do that, because that part's the easy part. Regardless, let's get this show on the road. Now I'm going to focus on Chapter 1, and Chapter 1 goes through a lot of axioms about human action. Ah. I bet I'm going to get like a copyright, uh... Lost to because of that shit. Like, my video's gonna get flagged or something in Germany. Because someone's plant blasting music in the back, and it's that guy from upstairs. So I know he must be having sex. Because that black ass motherfucker is always, um, doing those interactions. Alright, so, um. Oh, no, he's not, um, whatever. Anyway, I'm just gonna go into the topic. Now, I only have one critique so far of chapter one, and I've reviewed it so far, so that's a good thing, because usually I'm very critical as a human being. Then again, um, that book was full of axioms for chapter one on human interactions, and I was probably just bored and wasn't paying attention. But this is an actual, uh, I think it's a good point and a good argument, really. So it's more than just pointing out a minor detail. Maryam Rothbard said that only individuals can act because only individuals have end goals. And I believe that this isn't true at all. I believe that collective groups, states, and large clusters can form together as one giant faction of a common end goal. And one example of this I can point out um, is Karl Marx's view on the state. He believes that once human nature changes the state will just be this little shell of a cocoon that will just dry and wither away because it'd be pointless at that point and I'm not a Marxist but I agree that um once the end goals of a collective group or faction have been made once a common end goal is made um you can tell that they have an end goal and that they've completed it based on whether or not that faction ends so it's not all just collective groups only interact in means. They themselves have end goals. And I think that's very good in understanding the nature of the state and how complicated it can actually be. Oh no, um, that's going to be my little critique on chapter one. It might not seem like a very big point to you, but I think it's a good one for me since I 
usually complicate things in regards to the states. I've mentioned how I believe that states will like try attempt to consolidate into a world government, into something of a cosmopolitan nature. And once that faction would be complete, maybe that the very nature of a state system will fade into a more cosmopolitan system of government. Which would be like the monopoly becoming the end game. And that'd be pretty bad. The end all be all. Anyway, I'm just gonna end it at that. Uh, pretty much, I've rambled a lot. I'm gonna kill that guy upstairs. I'm just kidding, don't flag this video.